Okay, a quick recap of what we did in our previous tutorial. We instantiated a triangle object using the springs get bean method. And in the triangle object, we had a member variable called type, which was of type string. Now we used the spring configuration, we used this property tag here, in order to preset the value of that member variable to a value that we wanted. And uh, spring automatically had assigned the value to this member variable and when it handed over the object to us. So in fact, what we're doing here is kind of a dependency injection because you see, the triangle object is dependent on this member variable. So, you know, string is an object, but uh, for all practical purposes, you can almost consider it as a primitive. But, uh, but the thing here is that whatever value this object is dependent on is being injected into this object. So this is kind of a dependency injection. Um, you can, of course, inject objects as well. So say, for example, instead of a string, you had another object that was defined over here, you could inject a complete object as well. We're going to have a look at that in the next tutorial. But in this tutorial, I want to show you one other way in which we can do this. See here, we used a property tag to set the value. Now what the property tag is doing is, it's using this setter, you have defined a setter here called set type. And Spring is using the setter in order to initialize the value here. So this is called setter injection. There is another way you can inject values and that's by constructor. You can use constructor injection. This is if you have a constructor in your class which takes in the parameters for its member variables, you can use that constructor to set the values instead of using a setter. So we will write a constructor for this class. And now the property tag, since it's using the setter in order to set the values, we'll have to change this tag in order to use the constructor instead, in order to set the values. So I'll create a constructor here. I'll call this public triangle. And now this constructor will take the type parameter. So I'll define a string and uh, I will assign the input value that I get type to this member variable. So I'll say this dot type equals type. So now what I need to do is, let me save this. Now I had configured Spring to use the setter by using the property. Now I need to tell Spring to initialize the object using this constructor. I want Spring to sp pass this value, whatever value I've set here, equilateral. I want Spring to pass this value to this constructor when it is constructing this object. And the way to do that is to change this tag. Instead of using the property tag, I use another tag called constructor hyphen arg, which stands for constructor argument. Now the constructor arg does not have a name attribute, it just has a value. So here, this constructor takes in just one value. So we are passing that value to the constructor. So now I will save this. And in order to prove the point, what I'll do is I will comment out this setter. Okay. So now I will save and run this class again. Note that there is no change needed over here. So what I'm changing is a blueprint for Spring to generate the object. And uh, the calling class doesn't really care how Spring generates the object, it just receives the object from Spring. So now let's run this. And here you can see that it still sets the value equilateral, even though we have commented out the setter. And uh, even though this, the type is private, it does this by using the constructor. Using the constructor arg, we have asked Spring to initialize this object and pass in the value using this constructor. So now we can have as many number of constructors as we want. So um, let's say, for example, I have another uh, Another member variable here, I'll call this private integer height. And I'm saving the height of the triangle. Now I'm going to generate, I'll just generate getters for this one. I'm not going to generate uh, a setter. 
that's because I'm going to set it using the constructor. So I just have a get height so that I can print it out here. Um, now let me save this. I'm going to write one more um, constructor here, which takes in both these arguments. Say I have a constructor here, which takes the type as well as the height and uh, let's say this dot height equals height. So using this method overloading, I am having two different definitions of constructors. So now in my spring.xml, if uh, I have only one value in the constructor arg, uh, spring is going to call this constructor, which takes in only just one value. But if I have defined two values here, now let's say I use one more constructor arg here. Okay, now here the value that I'm going to set, let's call this 20, which is the height. So I'm passing two values. Now what Spring is going to do is it's it looks for a constructor which takes in two values and it finds one over here. So it's going to set the type as well as the height and then these member variables will have these two values. So let me just change the draw um, to print out the height as well. Of height and then I'll print out the get, get height. Okay, so I'm passing equilateral and 20 as the two parameters. So this constructor should get called and the type should be set to equilateral and the height should be set to 20. Now, if I run this, there you can see it's set to an equilateral triangle and the height has been set to 20. Now note one thing here, both these uh, values, I'm defining this inside double quotes, both of them have been defined as string, but spring intelligently converts the type. So here, since the second type is of height, it's gonna convert this value into an integer value, and then it's gonna do the assignment. So this part is something that Spring takes care of. Uh, depending on the data type of the constructor argument, it's gonna do the corresponding type conversion. So this is fine, but then this leads to one potential problem. See, the thing about overloaded constructors is that uh, the actual constructor that needs to be run is evaluated depending on the type of the values. So let's say, for example, I have a constructor that takes in a string and uh, let me define one more constructor here for the height alone. So I'm gonna have a third constructor. This one takes in an int height and then uh, let me set the height here. This dot height equals height. Okay, so I have uh, three constructors. The first one takes a type string and then it sets the string member variable. The second one takes the height integer and it sets the height integer member variable. And then the third one takes in both the string and the integer, the type and the height, and it sets both the member variables. Now the question is this. Normally, when you're uh, resolving which constructor needs to be executed, what you would say is, okay, it depends on the arguments, data type. So you're calling a constructor with the data type string, then you know that this is the constructor that gets executed. So it's gonna call the type constructor. Say you're calling a constructor with the data type int, then you know that this is the constructor that gets executed because you've defined a constructor with int. Note that in the case of spring, that could be a problem because whether it's a string or an integer, we are specifying both the same way. So we are not having any data type. We know that Spring intelligently does the data type conversion, but we are specifying it as strings for both of them. Now let's say I define only this, uh, I define only this one. Okay, let me remove this. I intend to call this constructor. Okay, the height constructor. Now, since both integer parameters as well as 
um, string parameters are represented the same way, there is no way for Spring to know whether it has to pass this value to this constructor or this constructor. It doesn't know whether to assign the value to the height or to the type. So we need to provide Spring a clue to let it identify what type this is. And the way to do that is by using this type property and I say the type is integer. So now what's gonna happen is Spring is gonna know that the value that I'm passing here is an int. So it's gonna look for a constructor with a single argument which takes an integer. It's, it knows that this is the one. So it's gonna assign the height as 20. So now if I run this, uh, the type is of course null, but then it's assigned the value of 20 to the right member variable, which is the height in this case. So I can change this to, uh, say I wanted, uh, I wanted to set a string. So in that case, I can say java dot lang dot string. So since string is an object, I need to give the complete uh, package name. So now what's gonna happen is, let's say I, whatever value I set here, it's gonna go to the type. Now I won't change this, but just uh, retain the value 20. So in this case, when I run this, the type will be the string value 20. So there you can see, the type has taken the value of 20, the height is zero because we have not set the value. So this is one way in which we can specify the type of the value that you want to set to the constructor. There is another way to do this. You have something called as an index. So let's say I do not specify the type here. I can uh, specify an index. So this is if you want to resolve between multiple constructors depending on the order of the parameters. So you can specify an index equals zero and an index equals one. So in this case, what's gonna happen is, let me change this back to a equilateral. In this case, what's gonna happen is it's gonna look for a constructor with two arguments, and it's gonna set the first argument as this one with an index of zero, and the second argument as this one with an index of one. So let me remove the spaces here. So that looks neat. Okay, so I'll save this, and uh, now I'll run. Now what should happen is, equilateral should be set for the first parameter and uh, the value of 20 should be set for the second parameter. So the type becomes equilateral and the height becomes an integer. So let me run this once again. And there you go. So it has set the values depending on the order that we have specified. So in summary, there are two ways in which we can inject these properties into our object. Uh, this reflects the ways in which you would initialize an object if you'd use a new operator and uh, you're not using spring. You would either create the object using new and then you would set the values using the setter or you would pass the values to a constructor itself so that the object gets initialized with the values for the member variables. So Spring provides ways in which we can do both these options. Uh, one is uh, using the setter injection which we had seen in an earlier tutorial. We'd use a property tag here and uh, the setter would be called in order to initialize the value. The second way is by using this constructor arg tag, which makes sure that the values that we specify is passed to a constructor when the object is initialized so that the, all the values are actually set in the object before Spring hands over the object to us.